Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from MechTech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at a, one of the newer models from Red Dragon, it's the K656 or the Garen Pro um, and it is a compact 1800 layout, I'd say 1800 but it's missing that center column. It has an interesting design, it is more gamer centric from what I gather, though a lot of Red Dragon products really I mean, they're, they kind of try to fit in both worlds. So, we'll be taking a look at this today and see what we get out of the box. All right, so before we take a look at the keyboard, let's see what we've got in the box. We've got a pretty simple, basic, pretty basic um, user manual. We've got a USB-C to USB-C cable with a, a C adapter attached with the tail. Thank you, Red Dragon. We have a standard wire keycap and switch puller, though I do like these that have the uh, circle in the middle, so you can use your finger to get a bit more leverage. And then we have some extra switches, which uh, again is something I really appreciate when they include extra switches in a pre-built. Um, for whatever reason or another, if you happen to damage one of the switches, you've got a spare. Now this is new on me. A purple red dragon switch. Ooh, and it's a tactile. Huh, there's no ping. Wow. Um, it's about a medium tactile. Well, light to medium. It a little bit more tactile than a brown, but it has a nice sharp bottom out. And it is long pull. Hmm. I gotta say, I'm uh, I'm intrigued. And here we are with the Red Dragon K656 Garen Pro. Um, Pro usually with Red Dragon means that they are wireless. We have a nice pocket for the USB dongle, and it just appears to be pressure fit. I don't see a magnet there. It just fits in there nicely, but doesn't feel like it's going to fall out. You've got the USB-C port, though it is kind of recessed, and it has those channels if you want to route it out one side or the other instead of down the middle. And we do have two pairs of feet. i got to say, the design I find interesting. It's definitely, I don't know if it's, if I would say it has a little bit of a, a retro... It has a different design as it ha the case has a lip that comes up. Looks like there's some indicator lights there. We've got indicator lights there. Oh, gosh, are those lights? Let's turn it on and see. So yeah, those just seem to be some LEDs up there to highlight the Red Dragon. I mean, it's interesting. Now it is a plastic I would say it's polycarbonate um, and it, like I said it doesn't have that middle column so I think this would be a compact 1800 so um, with this keyboard we have uh, like I said I I know that they primarily make gaming keyboards but to me if you like a keyboard like a keyboard it doesn't mean you have to use it for gaming so it looks like we have double shot keycaps or at least top double shot. All right, so they're 1.2 millimeters. They'd be a little bit thicker if they were fully double shot, but that's a, in my opinion, it's a good width for keycaps for a Red Dragon. Now, those that and the fact that we've got tactile switches, it's like, is it really a gamer keyboard? Because I mean, as far as I understand, Gamers prefer linear switches and prefer shine through. But see, that's what I mean. There's so much variance. I just don't think, I don't know. I don't like to categorize keyboards as this is strictly for for gaming. Anyway, so we have some, uh, we have actually a nice keycap set. It does look to be 
Uh, I wouldn't say it's cherry. It's not uniform, but it doesn't have... It's almost like a DSA, but not uniform. I'll have to see what profile these are. Let's take a look at the stabilizers. So we do have plate-mounted stabilizers. and Sounds like metal plate, is it? Yep. We have a steel plate, so, I mean... Not surprising, but um, they have been putting out some gasket mounted kits as of lately, and they've been nice. Stabilizers are a little bit loose. They'll probably get helped with a little bit of tape. Let me see how they sound. Not bad. Despite the uh, stabilizers being a little loose, they don't sound half bad. It's actually got an interesting sound profile, I've got to say. It's a little bit tappy or clacky, but with that tactile switch, it, it really it makes it fun. It's, it's fun to tap. and. It's almost like a deep, clicky switch, if that makes any sense. I don't know. I, I actually kind of like how it sounds. Just the specs. Today we are taking a look at the Red Dragon K656 Garin Pro 3-mode compact 1800 with 100 keys. It has USB-C. Bluetooth 5 and 2.4 gigahertz connectivity. It is made out of a translucent blue plastic base and has a steel tray mounted plate. It does include purple Red Dragon tactile custom switches. It is also loaded with double shot keycaps which are either ABS or PBT but that they don't say that or the profile but the thickness of the body is 1.2 millimeters. It also includes an EVA dampener between the plate and the PCB. Preloaded with a battery that has 3000 milliamp hours of power and weighs in at 1025 grams. The chin of this keyboard sits at 20 millimeters above the typing surface while the back sits at 37.5 millimeters providing for a default typing angle of 5 degrees. Using the first set of included fold-out feet will raise the back up to 45.5 millimeters, changing the angle of typing to 9 degrees. Using the final set of fold-out feet will take the back up to 53.5 millimeters and changing your typing angle to 12 degrees. So despite this keyboard being marketed as a gaming keyboard, I think it just fits for who's who likes it. Um, I just... I like mechanical keyboards. Distinguishing amongst them, I mean, yes, there's, in my opinion, there's off the shelf and there's custom. And there are some gaming keyboards that I like, and but I'm not a gamer, so, you know, where does that put me? <laughs> but these keycaps are actually decent. I can't tell the uh, profile. I want to say KSA, but it's, it's a non-uniform kind of a this does have a nice curve to it they're not too tall so and these switches I still uh, can't find much about these uh, purple red dragon tactiles that if I had to guess they are they're pre-lubed or, or if not just made good well enough that they don't require any um, lubrication. But they are badged Red Dragon. So we can see we have a nice, what feels like a silicone um, dampener between the plate and the PCB and the, the steel plate. And it looks like there doesn't seem to be anything below the case. There's also no IXPE foam. Um, above the PCB 
And despite that, I think it sounds pretty good, but I think that when I come back to this, open it up and add something down at the bottom, add some PE foam as well as the PET mod, I think that'll take this keyboard to a whole nother level. I think it has the beginning sound profile to be able to get some very interesting and distinct um, sound out of it. Despite it being a steel plate though, I think that I'll still be able to finesse something nice out of this. And I actually look forward to doing that because this is a different kind of case. So gonna have to see, it looks like we got screw posts that are gonna be somewhere. Yep, I see them right there. So let's see the tray mounts with screws right there. So opening this up shouldn't be too much of an issue, but it should be, like I said, it should be interesting. I can, the uh, mode button is actually quite big, and uh, it's it's kind of tight in there. It's a bit of a you have to put a little bit of force into switching it on and off. But This is actually a keycap set that I would keep on the keyboard because I like it. It's it's a blue gradient fading from a darker at the bottom to a lighter blue at the top. And it already has the you know function the functions uh, kind of screen screen printed in there. Those are not double shot, but you can definitely see what they do as far as you've got the multimedia controls play. The volume um, that I would guess is to program the memory, and I know the software for Red Dragon. They've actually they've improved it over the years, definitely, and it does allow you to do per key RGB. But this one is one of the ones that you can also do it from the keyboard itself. So the only thing I, I wonder why they didn't take advantage of the clear case to uh, go ahead and do some down LEDs shine down or side the side shine um, being that it's you know a translucent case i think that would have uh, looked nice it's not that i need it but i'm just curious but i am curious to get in there because yeah there is nothing there's the battery right there it looks like it's one of the ones that attaches itself to the pcb um look that does look to be like a daughter card or a daughter board for the uh, USB-C controller but um Oh, there looks to be that's the connector for the daughter board I would guess so yeah I'm, uh, I'm definitely interested to get into this keyboard and see what it's like but it has a deeper tone it there is no ping to speak of I mean even yeah even putting it up to my ear those uh, because the switches aren't pinging there's nothing to reverberate across the steel board so i think it sounds pretty good out of the box um but i think that this is a base that i can seriously improve on probably the the best since um the uh i've been modding their, um, their K631 to 65%. I've got a few of them that I've modded. I've been able to get very nice sound profiles out of them, but they're all uh, have the integrated plastic plate at the top. This one you know, has the top case, then the steel plate. I'm pretty confident that if I... Uh, I don't know what I'll put down here. Maybe I'll do some silicone. I haven't done a silicone pour in a minute. I think that that battery case, I mean, I could cut out for it, but that would... That would kind of impede me, so I'm going to try to figure out something else uh, to put in here. Or perhaps I'll just do just a sheet of PE or the PET plastic and just leave it at that. Well, maybe I can do some polyfill. I don't know. We'll see. Because it's already got a base, a deep, deeper base than most keyboards. 
it's a deep clacky, but I think I can take that to a deep thonky. I'm, I'm very curious, but I like the layout. It has the, um, the necessary keys, and because the top function row isn't expanded, it has the space for both delete and insert, which I usually just reprogram the lower or the next the layer underneath the lead to be insert but i like them just right there it's basically giving you the six keys that you would get in a tkl just in one row separated by this spacer here um looks like a, it might be a, yeah i guess it's a 1.75 uh shift like it is on most of these 1800s uh, but for the most part you've got a full-size keyboard <laughs> because if you think of this as the TKL um, the three TKLs really the only thing that you're missing is the top with the print screen pause um, and break pause break scroll lock and print screen keys which appear to be right here scroll lock print screen and pause and for me uh, the only one that I really use is print screen but I usually I've been mapping it to function backspace so and i think red dragon does allow you to do the key combinations as opposed to only profiles like most of the software but i i, I gotta say i like this layout i'm used to even the 1800s having you know this going all the way out the f12 coming all the way out here because of the space between each of the four of those function keys and even a space between escape and the function but this layout works for me and i could I would be able to pop it on my desk and get to work. I wouldn't, there would be very little time needed to get adjusted to the slightly different layout. And I wouldn't need a numpad like I do with any 75% or lower, I should say TKL or smaller um, keyboards that I have to because of when I'm doing some programming, I'm gonna be using the, the, the numpad. So, I've got to say, I <clears throat> I continue to be impressed by the keyboards Red Dragon's putting out. Not only are they they're throwing a lot of things, you know, hey, let's try this, let's try that. So they're being creative and they're giving their engineers and their team, um, you know, the ability to just hey, go with it. You think this will look good? You think folks will like this? You think this? They're trying different things and. Despite them, I don't want to say them being a smaller company, but being more, you know, a gaming company, I think a lot of people put them inside of a box, whereas I feel that they're very creative with their products and they continue to only get better. I've, I've reviewed a couple of Red Dragons, their, some of their first uh, gasket mount kits uh, this year that I'm, I'm completely impressed with because they're basically good to go out of the box for a lot of people they, they're more than sufficient um they sound good they feel good they're getting better switches they're they're adding better keycaps i mean you know double shot yeah they're 1.2 millimeter uh, thickness they may not be the thickest keycaps but they sound just fine on this keyboard I didn't have a couple of keyboards calling my name waiting to go under the uh, camera. I would do the mod on this right away, but I'm going to try to move this up my list of, of keyboards to mod. Um, this is something that I think I could use as a, as a daily driver. I don't, if, it, if I put it on my desk, I'm going to probably disconnect the battery, but I don't know. I, uh... I'm thinking too much about modding it and I gotta stop because if not, I'll just move right into modding it. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just leave you guys with the stock sound test, the Red Dragon K656 Garen Pro. And I think that's a, is that a character from a game, Garen? I know I've seen it before somewhere, but uh, I'm not much up on this. I bet if I asked my kids, they'd know. But yeah, this is the K56 or K656. RGB Pro. So I'll go ahead and include links to this keyboard on their store and a discount code. I believe it's either 5 or 10%. I'll uh, go ahead and close out with a stock sound test of this K656 Pro uh, Red Dragon, which honestly, I mean, it speaks to me. So uh, it, it, it may be going 
as my daily right away. But yeah, let me let me get through the sound test, and then we'll see when I come back to the uh, mod video because I I will be doing that very soon. Anyway, until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.